LSU Odyssey Oddcast Radio. What up, everybody? I wanted to continue talking NSD. You know, we, we, we jumped in headfirst, put our entire torso in the water for NSD, but I still call it part one just because there I knew there would be still so much to discuss. You know, we last episode with this, we really, really talked a lot about Harold Perkins, as we should. And we're still going to continue talking Harold Perkins. But what we did not discuss thoroughly in the last one was, was Jacoby Matthews. And that was because the Jacoby Matthews news was just about to go down. Jacoby announcement was just about to happen. We discussed, you know, Texas A&M coming in there with a last-ditch NIL offer that just obliterated the, 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 the rest. The, obliterated LSU's offer and then LSU's you know businessmen in the area LSU supporting businessmen got together and made a big move for Jacoby it did not work Jacoby Matthews goes to Texas A&M and LSU lose the five star Ponchatoula safety Louisiana native and we lose him to Texas A&M Jimbo Fisher as the greatest, highest ranked recruiters, recruiting class of all time now. Topping last year's Alabama class. That was just filth. But I think Texas A&M's class is even deeper and even better than, than last year's Alabama. You've got so many names, it's ridiculous. So many studs, freaks, specifically on defense that it's just, it, it's crazy. And um, losing Jacoby Matthews to a group that's already so loaded, losing him to an SEC West rival, losing him to the Aggies just sucks. It hurts. But you know what? We didn't really need to convince Harold Perkins after a certain point. If we had to keep convincing Jacoby Matthews every season whether he, you know, to stay at LSU or not, then that's, you know, make this decision now and we'll move on and we'll do what's best for LSU. Do, do you do what's best for Jacoby Matthews? All right. I feel like if, if we were to ha- have needed to get one of the two, and I said this in the last episode, if we, if we had, if you held a gun to my head and said, you can only pick one of these two five stars, which one do you, do you want? I would say Harold Perkins without hesitation. That has nothing to do against Jacoby Matthews. That is more me specifically saying Harold Perkins is that man. He is that linebacker. He's that freak, that defensive human missile crisis LSU need, you know, until 2023 when we can can get another number one linebacker from that class, Tackett Curtis, another Louisiana native as well. And so Harold Perkins was really that big need for me, in my in my opinion. We had to have him. Had to have Harold Perkins. Had to have Harold. Losing Caleb Douglas. Losing Trevante Citizen. I mean, we didn't even lose Trevante Citizen to Billy Napier either. We had to have Harold Perkins. Especially with Jacoby Matthews going to Texas A&M as well. So, you know, there's so many LSU fans who are hanging their heads who feel like, you know, yesterday, National Signing Day, was abysmal for LSU, was bad for the Tigers. You know, a lot of just bad news bears. I agree and I disagree there, too. You know, the Tigers did some damn good work. Getting Harold Perkins did not feel like a complete reality at any stage of the Orgeron era, even when he was visiting like crazy, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, yeah, can Coach O finish though? Can he close? I I had my biggest doubts. When LSU got Harold Perkins on campus, I knew 
with this last official visit, they were going to seal this and make it good, make it done, because that's what Brian Kelly does. And he he's, re- he's surrounded himself with a staff that have been through everything on the recruiting trail and know how to do this. And, you know, they're, they're, they're getting very savvy with, with some of the new techniques and the new social media kind of obsession with recruiting. And, you know, I just, I get it. LSU had some misses. We, we should have signed Caleb Douglas, no cap. We should have signed Danny Lewis Jr. Not in a million years should that guy have ever gone to Alabama. Okay. I mean, there's a list of there's a list of guys I can go. To. Jacoby Matthews, of course, he should have never been going to Texas a and Denver Harris. I mean, my God, his 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 uncle literally is one of one of the one of LSU basketball's great players of the last 20 years. Like, you're telling me, like, that guy doesn't have Tiger blood? Like, there's guys with Tiger blood who we just watched walk right out that door, whether it was through the transfer portal or guys who decommitted from LSU or should have committed, never never crossed that threshold. So when I look at Brian Kelly's debut class at LSU, I kind of look at it in two parts. I look at it with, you know, recruits that Coach Ed Orgeron's presence or lack of presence took away from LSU. I also then look at it in, in, you know, who... Who could LSU have have seriously done better here with? Like, who did we who did we one hundred percent miss out on that? Without that player, we're going to be screwed coming into twenty twenty two. I cannot say without Jacoby Matthews, LSU are screwed in twenty twenty two because we're so damn loaded at safety. I cannot say losing out on Caleb Douglas screws our receiving core for 2022. We've got Kayshawn Booty. DeRay Jenkins is even returning. Seven touchdowns, or, or was it six? Six or seven touchdowns. And then he's, he's he's surrounded by a litany, a plethora of brilliant freshmen who are now becoming sophomores. Most caught multiple touchdowns. Every one of them at least caught one. And we're even talking the return of Deion Smith, too. So, you know, you're looking across the board with receiver. We're fine there. Caleb Douglas doesn't hurt us. Trevante Citizen, you know, we just got Noah Kane, a five-star Louisiana native, out of the transfer portal from Penn State, where he was Penn State's all-time leading freshman running back, producing running back. And, um... We, we just made up for Trevante Citizen's loss before it happened. You know, that's that's the great thing about Brian Kelly. We're seeing preemptive strikes. Okay, we're seeing we're seeing moves made when a, a move isn't being screamed or baked to, to, to be done. But Kelly is looking around that corner and seeing what's what's happening, anticipating, and uh, making those moves accordingly. I just, I, I feel really good about this class. You know why? Because I feel like we got the establishment, the base establishment, perfectly correct with those early signings in December. And then we put in the cherries on top here. And you know, Landon Ibietta, you could also put him in the cherry on top, on top uh, category as well. I just feel like, yes, LSU could have had a far better class, of course, but going from 38th in the nation to 6th overall when count, you know, including our, our transfer work, that's, uh, that's pretty sick. Brian Kelly, you know, sure, we watched Aaron Anderson walk out the door to, uh, Alabama, 
We watched Kendrick Law watch, walk out the door to Alabama. We watched Shaz Preston walk out of the door to Alabama. We watched you know Julian Armea go to Florida State. There's a lot of guys that Ordron was on, and we and we missed out in the 2022 class. You know, with a historic historic class. But what makes me really proud, and that what we could not afford to fail at, was making sure LSU secured the Louisiana talent from 2022. I understand we, we missed out on the top three receivers in the class. But ladies and gentlemen, we weren't desperate for receivers in this class. We just got Jack Besh, Brian Thomas Jr., Chris Hilton Jr., Dion Smith, and Malik Neighbors, all as freshmen in the same class. Okay? We're not desperate or dying for receiving help, okay? Let me just point that out very clearly here. And so, you know, like you've got to you've got to take the good with the bad, but you also gotta keep some nuance here. You've gotta look at this with you gotta understand both sides and, and what's going on here in it and all of its dimensions, not just, you know, I wanted more corners and so we didn't get more corners, I'm pissed. Like look at the roster and look at what we need. Look at who we just got coming in the transfer portal. You know, I I really I gotta say the transfer portal work keeps rearing its head and not all of these guys are going to be instant starters instant Hollywood brilliant five star elitist talents all Americans in waiting I'm not saying that but three fourths of them probably are and then the rest are depth guys locker room guys experience guys who are so valuable to this team and our development in this transition year you know, I, I'm looking for that ex, that great mix of youth and experience in each position group. Do we have it? Look at the offensive line. Before the transfer portal opened for LSU, before Kelly came on board, how did that offensive line unit look? How did, I mean, how did that offensive line look? It looked like a bunch of very highly talented youth guys surrounded by a lot of uncertainty. Now we've got that establishment of strong, capable freshman youth. But now we've got layers and layers and layers of experience on top of them. So we've got the guys who are returning the upperclassmen from the last few years. Guys who might be waiting to pop. Marlon Martinez, Marcus Dumerville, Garrett Dellinger, SEC All-American, freshman All-American. And uh, now you've got Miles Frazier on there. Now you've got Traymon Shorts on there. Now, you know, you've got all this, all these layers of experience. And that's what I'm looking at in each position group. You know, Micah Baskerville, the ultimate veteran at linebacker. Mike Jones Jr., another veteran, because let's be honest, he's played in three college football playoff tournaments. Played in two national championship games. Yes, Mike Jones Jr. has that experience. May not be in an LSU uniform like totally, but last year, even when he was played as, as little as he was played, he had the big time experience in the Alabama game games after that very high functional. I I'm ready to see him and Baskerville lead that linebacking core. And then, you know, Greg Penn, the third Demario Tolan. And then of course, Harold Perkins right in behind. So you've got layers of experience, layers of depth, layers of, of fiery talent, young, fiery talent. You look at defensive tackle, even when we're losing Neil Farrell, Glenn Logan, you know, you still got Jaqueline Roy, who one of the best players LSU had this season. He's in our best 11 Tigers list of 2021 on the site. You know, Jacobian Guillory is looking aggressive and beastly too. 
and then you line them up with someone like Ty G. Hill, and then you got Quincy Wiggins on the outside. I mean, goddamn. Okay? Like, this, this is what I love about LSU football, okay? This is what I love about LSU football. We know what it takes. We know what it takes because every year we have to go through the gauntlet. We have to go through the murdering row gauntlet. We know that just one loss to to Alabama ends everything. Okay? We need to take that into how we prepare this season. And I'm telling you right now, those players... All in with Jake Flint, strength and conditioning team. All in. So what this freshman class is going to produce for us is, is, I love what's coming. And then the, the transfers on top of the of the freshmen, the freshmen, you got the the freshman freshmen, and the trans transferians together, kind of backing each other up. I love it. I love it. Uh, I think we've addressed as many needs as we possibly can, fill as many needs as we possibly could. Of course, there were some losses. I blame that on the transition and kind of the the bullshit left in the wake of Coach Ed Orgeron rather than blaming that on Brian Kelly and his staff. But yeah, um, we're going to even continue to talk about this more. We're going to have a National Signing Day All Together Now article coming out, which is going to include every single guy, all 15 freshmen in the class who've signed. And yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. We've also got a piece coming out about the quarterbacks at LSU, and we've got some big clues as who will be LSU's starter for 2022. Check that out on this on the site and it's going to only be for subscribers. I got I got to honor the subscribers who are actually supporting my work, putting their money where their mouth is and we we're, we're going to make the best stuff subscriber only. That's that's just what we're going to do here because the the subscribers deserve it. They've been supporting me and my work. They've been sh- coming out in mass lately. And I want to thank all of you for supporting, for, for spreading this stuff, for, for reading, for taking the time to, to check out our stuff. It, it means so much. We put a lot of work into it. We, we spend a lot of time doing this stuff. It means so much that you even just spend any time uh, listening, watching, reading our, our, our content. It means so much. And I just want you to know, we appreciate everything. We appreciate, we appreciate all of it. And seriously, thank you so much for, for, for following us through this National Signing Day action. There's, there's a lot of you. Um, thank you so much. It was epic. And um, we're going to be doing a lot more interactive uh, craziness on LSUodyssey.com, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be off the chain. 